Hi guys, welcome to Gemma Bee Makes. I'm Gemma and this is my crafty channel where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. I have got some knitting, some spinning and some sewing to talk about this week. And yeah, I think it's been three weeks since I last saw you guys. Um, so I had two weeks where I was doing my usual crafty routine -y kind of thing and then um, one week has been the school holidays. It was a really, really busy school holidays this time. We went to the zoo and we went to the beach and stayed in a caravan for a couple of day, a couple of nights. That was really, really nice. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really nice. We've had some nice time. It's, the weather has been lovely. It's really, really warm the past couple of days. Um, it's super sunny outside, but windy at the minute. So I'm enjoying it because I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm wearing a woolly jumper. <laughs> it's got short sleeves, but I am actually finished. My Stripes by Andrea Maori. <laughs> so I'm going to start talking about my knitting because it's this is why we're here, let's face it. So on the screen now, I'm sure you can see me in my uh, a little bit more of a close-up of my jumper that I finished. So this is Stripes, like I said, by Andrea Maori. And I have knit it all in my own hand-spun yarn. It was some Corridale that I got from the World of Wool and I've spun it on my electric eel wheel nano to a two-ply yarn and I've knit myself a jumper out of it. I'm so, so, so happy with it. So all my lovely um, original peeps will know that I've been talking about <laughs> the inspiration for this jumper for the longest time. Um, so a quick rundown one more time for the last time because that's, we're done. So I went on a day trip out with my family and um, I was trying to take inspiration for my next my next project basically. That's not why I went out but I it's what happened while I was out. I was inspired by the lovely crowned crane here on the screen. He is majestic in all his ways <laughs> um, but I just really liked the colours. I got some Corriedale from World of Wool uh, that was already um, commercially dyed and I spun it into a two-ply yarn. I was umming and ahhing for ages about the pattern and a really, really kind viewer of the podcast, Valerie, bought me the pattern for uh, Andrea Maori's stripes. And I think it does the yarn. I think I'm really, really pleased with how this jumper has turned out and how it's looked. Um, I am a little disappointed in the increase area. So, and if you can quite see, I don't think you can see here, but it just kind of ripples like this really all the way across the yoke and all the way around the back. And it's just how it's increased. But do you know what? It's really, really comfortable. The yarn's nice. It's not too itchy. And there is a little bit of itch just under the arm here, but I know for a fact that with like a couple of wears that'll disappear. Um, my other one did the same. I did the Jupiter crop by um, Boylan Knitworks, and that was a little itchy to start and, and after a first couple of wears I can barely feel it. it's really really soft now. Um, so I know I know that it's going to soften up. It's actually got quite a bit of a fuzzy halo to it which I really like. Um, I don't know if it'll fuzz up anymore but yeah I really, I really like the fuzzy feel to it. So um, because it was hand spun, the leftovers that I had, I was playing the biggest game of yarn chicken with this jumper. So I knew I would rather have the length um, so it fit right on my body than I would the sleeves this time. Um, and actually it was the blue. So this is what I have left of the dark blue. Um, yeah, so actually originally I'd, I'd knit all the body I knew how much I needed for that and then I was just going to do the sleeves and I got to I did this one and I knew I wasn't going to get another stripe on each sleeve so I thought well I'll just knit to the blue but it came here and it cut right into my elbow and I knew for a fact that was going to be really annoying so I pulled back both sleeves and um finished on the same colour that I started and actually it's the same colour that I finished on on the rib at the bottom as well and that gave me the the, the length that I wanted so actually it, it goes much better it fits just nicely on my arms there 
without it going into the crease of my elbows and I'm really really chuffed with it it feels comfortable it's really nice fitting flowy it's going to be warm I think um like more of a, a spring and autumn-y jumper rather than um, a wintery. I'd rather have sleeves at winter, but really, really nice. I'm just a little bit annoyed at that. There's that wrinkly bit, but do you know, it just, I think it'll just eventually sit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it will. It'll just stretch itself out to magically fit perfectly. But yeah, I don't know. I don't get what that is, the wavy thing. I think it's just got... It's just how it gets increased. I think what I'm realising is that I prefer a raglan increase on my jumpers for the fit. Fit. Oh. See, I'm saying that, but I really enjoyed the Strange Brew sweater recipe. That gave me a nice fit. And so did the Zweig that I recently knit. And that was a an increase around the corner. So I don't know, maybe it's just... Both of my Andrea Maori patterns have done the same. Maybe it's just how how they are. Maybe it's just how I knit them. I don't know. I don't think I'll do another one. I think my next knit jumper will either be a raglan or I might do a nice pieced piece. I haven't decided yet. I have got yarn set aside for a new jumper, but um, I haven't picked the pattern yet, so. I think I might have to go with a raglan increase and see what, have a little look and see if I can put that onto attributes when I'm searching for a new pattern and see what it brings up. Um, but yeah, that is my finished object. I've really, really enjoyed working on it. It's been a really nice, easy knit. I've enjoyed working on it. And because it's hand spun as well, I've enjoyed working with the yarn. It's really, really nice. And it's nice to be able to have so much, like, yarded, no, what do I mean? Like, the project has taken such a long time. I've had so much fun with it right from the very beginning when it was just an inspirational picture to finding the colours, spinning the yarn, then knitting, then having a final object. It's been, I've really, really enjoyed that process. So I think that is probably what I'm going to do for my next hand spun knitted jumper, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit because I have been knitting something else as well so in my little mrs brown's bags i have my whip again it is hand spun <laughs> so these are some hand spun sock tubes that i made well i made one sock tube out of the leftover hand spun yarn this is um it's a rambouille Rambouille. I got told off the other day how I said Rambouille. Rambouille, because we're French. Um, and it is in the cowboy colourway and it is from Slotty Creations and it was really, really kindly gifted to me from uh, Zoe of Felicity Yarn Studios. It came all the way from America and I'd already made a pair of socks out of it and I didn't want to waste the leftovers because I thought it was cute. So I knit one big sock tube and then I cut it in half and put some toes on. This yarn is a sock yarn from, um... <laughs> oh, it's gone right out of my head. It's proper deep stash, the Yarn Lab. So the Yarn Lab UK and it is a Buffy colourway from um, a mini skin set that I got a long time ago. Um, so yes, so I put two toes on I've put two cuffs on and I've just cut in my heel. So I measured where I need to put my heel and I just cut it last night. So it's on two needles, it's ready to knit a heel on. So that is something that I've been enjoying doing. So that is the only other knitting project that I've been doing. I did my jumper and I've done some socks and I'm really, really enjoying only having a small amount of projects knitting at a time. It's, it's making me feel happy, although now that I've cast off the jumper and I'm very close to casting off the um, socks, I'm going to have to find myself a new project. Which works nicely into what I have been working on, on my spinning wheel. And look at these, they're so lovely. So, 
this is what I've been spinning. We've seen these two before on the last episode and I was working on this colour. This is Marrakesh. The yarn, uh, well the fibre is Ultra Fine Merino from Hilltop Cloud, 14.5 microns. It is so, so soft. It's the softest yarn I've ever spun. Absolutely stunning. And we also got this cocoa colourway. So I've now got four colours. Let's see if I can get them all looking nice for you. Um, so I, if I remember rightly, we've got marzipan, honey, I think, uh, marrakesh and cocoa. And I am going to make myself um, a nice big semi-circle shawl. I'm going to have a little look. They're 50 grams each. I'm not quite sure on the yardage to be truthful. I This time I did a traditional three-ply so I don't, I've not got quite as much yardage as I would have if I'd have done a two-ply because I've done three bobbins. Um, but I've definitely got enough to make myself um, a nice big scarf. I think what I'm going to do is just stripe them. I think I'm going to start from the darkest colour on the inside and I'm going to work my way to the um, to the lightest colour on the outside and do a semicircle, nice big shawly scarf for, for uh, winter time. So that is going to be my next cast on but I'm really really happy with how, with how um, consistent I've managed to get the yarn. I spin everything on um, an electric eel wheel nano I really, really like the little machine. Um, it's brilliant as um, as a starter, um, <laughs> as a starter spinning wheel. However, it will only let you spin one type of yarn, and it's this. It's really fine, thin, um, thin yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so it spin it spins lace weight yarn beautifully. I tend to pre-draft my fibre as I spin, so I pull. I'll pre-draft and spin that section at a time. Um, but yeah, it's so, so soft. So I finished my spinning project. I finished my knitting project. I've nearly finished my other knitting. Um, I'm, I'm on a little bit of a finishing, uh, finishing roll at the minute. I'm really enjoying it. But I've, obviously I've got a new cast on that I'm going to be casting on. I've got a new sweater quantity worth of yarn that I would like to cast on as well. So it's, it feels really nice to have finished all my, um, kind of wrapping up all my projects at the minute. I've, the thing that I've enjoyed the most, <laughs> I'd, oh, I've left it in the other room. Okay. In, in the last episode, I showed you, um, I was working on a little design for a needle case holder. I really wanted to have my a needle, a needle case for myself to be able to hold all of my needles. And I'd kind of drawn out a little design and they cut all my fabric to match what I'd drawn out. And this was the result. So this was, um, made out of a fat quarter set from the craft company the cotton craft company i bought it in john lewis it was 10 pounds for four fat quarters and here is all the little sections inside so i did some little pockets with poppers on and i did these little sections here so it's um Got a little button there and it's to put stitch markers on and then this little um patch here was kind of to put your needles and um what are they called the little key you know that stops your needles getting so um th to tighten up your needles when you're changing on the cables so to put those in um apart for crochet hooks and then all the needles that go here and then this part here was to put all the all the cables and then there's a pocket oh, I can't hold it very well I'm doing rubbish at this aren't I there's two pockets here on this side and then when you fold it all up 
and turn it the other way. There's a pocket here as well. Well, it's like a little zip pocket. I was really, really chuffed with it. So I think the design turned out really, really well. However, it was really floppy. I didn't use any interfacing and I filled it all up and put all my needles and things in it and it was just like, it was just a bit floppy. So I made myself another one. This time it worked out really, really well. So this is now my new needle case. Um, ironically, I used interfacing on this one and I used too much, I'll show you, but um, I need to do it again with like a half and half, but I know what I need to do now. So this time it's the same um, company, the same place that I bought the, the fabric from, it was John Lewis. This was in the green rather than the blue. I found this amazing orange zip to go in the back. So now I've got all my, what have I got in there? Some stitch markers, the stitch holders and my cable, what are they called? Cable needles. <laughs> so they're in there. I put some poppers to keep it all closed. And then all inside. So I've got my little pocket. So what I didn't realise was on the first time that I, um, that when I when I first made it, I measured these crochet hooks to get the size, not realising that um, the other crochet hooks were different sizes. So actually, when they all fit in, I didn't have room for the stitch marker holders or the little um, needle thing. But actually, I realised the pockets work really well. So actually, so the stitch markers are in the pockets and my needles are in the other pocket and my sewing in needles are just here look they're on the side of here so easy place to get them that's that's a pocket as well i'm so happy with how this turned out all my needles all in there and then on this side i've got all my cables and um, with poppers to keep them all in so it will stop it from turning out i'm saying some, something just fell out didn't it is my needle gauge that I put in here. How cool is that? I'm so impressed with myself. So I took this to um, show the ladies at my um, spinning group that we meet on a, on a Wednesday in the park. And I showed them, I was like, Haha, look how happy they are. Look how happy I am, <laughs> look what I've done. I've so managed to do it. And um, one of the ladies was like, what, what colour can I have mine? <laughs> So I've decided I'm going to make a few um, because I really enjoyed making it and designing it. It does need tweaking just that little bit more. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go and buy four meters, I think, of some really nice fabric. I really enjoy like the color matching of the fabric and things. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to go buy myself some fabric. Uh, and make a few more and sell them to friends and family. If there's any left, I might put some in my Etsy shop. If you would like one, and um, then maybe send me a message and I'll just make a few extra, just just for funsies. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I also, while I was sewing it, because I was going through things in my stash in the cupboard, please use the things that you've bought and um, yeah do the projects that have been there for such a long time that you've said I'll get around to that I'll get around to that so when I was looking through my big box of I'll get around to that I had um, this kit to make a bag <laughs> so I made myself a little tote bag as well this button is absolutely useless <laughs> but do you know what it's a really cute little shopping tote that took me about half an hour to whip up out of um, you know my very original my original originals that have been here forever will remember I think it was about three years ago I went to Harrogate Knitting and Stitching show and it was my first ever show it, I didn't have any fabric at all in my house um, as no, no stash no it was the very beginnings I went to uh, the show to have a little look around and this bag was in a kit it was uh, the kit to make this bag it came with a pattern and it came with the fabric um, and the instructions of how to make it 
and when I got it and when I first went to go make it the first instruction was interface your fabric and the kit didn't come with any interfacing and I was so mad I was like well it's a kit you're supposed to get all the pieces and it wasn't included and I was really annoyed but you know after three years of um of learning about fabric and about you know and, and the more you saw the more you learn and realized actually you really didn't need to interface it it is just a little fold up shopping tote and it took me seconds to do <laughs> and the fabric's cute it's got little owls on it do you remember when owls were a thing when they were everywhere like three years ago i don't know but i don't know if it was the same for you but everywhere i used to go there were owls everywhere but they're still cute i think they still hold up and it's been my little shopping bag for like well I made it a week ago and I think I've used it every day because it just fits everything in oh my legs going numb oh shake the whole camera then <laughs> I think I've sped through everything that I've been making that was so fast I also did make another little project bag out of um, some fabric and stuff that was in the bag but I've left it <laughs> I'm not going to get it now. Uh, I'll show you it next time. Um, it was, again, it was just a little project bag I made out of um, some fabric that was in the stash. Making things out of the box of things to make things. <laughs> Did that make sense? No. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk to you about. There is lots of things, actually. Um, so, I finished my spinning project. I really want to um do some more spinning however it is the tour de fleece very soon i think in a couple of weeks time i have joined um john arban's spinning team this year uh, the john arban easters i think it is so april who is uh demels of the cat on instagram she and another friend of hers of of um joined up with John Arben to make them um, a spinning team for them. So I have put my order in. I have got a little bit of fibre coming. I missed the mill weekend. So John Arben do an open mill weekend. And it was the weekend I was away with family for, um, it was been the school holidays here. So we had a few days away at the beach. It was really, really nice. Uh, but we had no reception. There was no internet there. There was no Wi-Fi. We were secluded it was really really nice to have the time off however i missed the weekend so i was really annoyed at that and everything was sold out so my idea i think because when i spun this yarn it was um it was all commercial yarn i did find at the end it was quite tedious i didn't tell i think i started telling you a story didn't i and then i haven't finished i'm so all over the place today um I really really enjoy spinning braids of colour, different colours, like um, it just keeps my interest so much more, I love how the yarn turns out. Um, so what I am going to do is order some plain white fibre from John Arben and I'm going to dye it myself. I would really like to dye myself a fade I don't know if that's possible to spin it. So I'm gonna have a little look. I'm gonna um, look for some inspiration. I might even go back to Harewood House and see if anything um, inspires me. I'll have a look in nature and see what goes together. I really would like to, um, yeah, like I say, spin myself a fade. I think I'm gonna get five different colors. Maybe I might do six, I might do six um, and yeah, have a play with some dye and see see what see what I can do. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I just need to find that inspirational colours now. I also need to order the dye and um, order the fibre. So I think I need to get my finger out really because it's it's not long away. Is uh, the Tour de Fleece? We've also done a little bit of a friendly competition with Zoe and Naomi who are Felicity Yarn Studio and the Yarn Curator of, um, yeah, let's see who can spin the most. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really very competitive, but it puts a nice, um, nice little bit of adventure into it and a, a little bit more of a um, competition. I feel, like, I feel like something to aim for. Although, 
oh no, just shook the whole thing. Earthquake. Um, I really enjoy the yarn of a traditional three ply. I'm really, um, I think this might be my new go to style of how to make the yarn. So I don't think I'm going to get as much yardage as I would if I was doing a two ply. But I think I'm going to go for the nicer yarn rather than ha <laughs> ha in your face. <laughs> Sounds good, right? <laughs> okay, I started telling you a story. I don't know how I didn't finish it. So I was telling you about my... This is only how much yarn I've got left of the blue. This is how much I've got left of the eggshell colour. I've got this of the blue. This of the white. And are you ready? I don't even think I can find the little tiny nubbin. And this. This of the burgundy colour. How inconsistent is that? <laughs> it's so bad, isn't it? So I can't, you know, I think I need to pay a little bit more attention that if I'm going to be making a jumper, maybe not have a super thin yarn and a more of a thicker one. I need to try and get a very even um, yarn if it's going to be a full jumper. Anyway, I'm sure I, I can't remember why I didn't finish the end of that story. Anyway, it's been really, really nice sitting with you guys and telling you all about what I've been making and what I've been doing. It's been enjoyable. So hopefully next time I see you, I will have a new cast on because I'll be uh, casting on, I think these, as soon as I finish my socks because I've been enjoying doing them. So I'll do my socks and then I'm going to cast on a new um, shawl for myself and I'm gonna go fabric shopping. I did have a little look in my stash throughout the things and there's nothing in there that really, um, that screams to me. Uh, I've got lots and lots of leftovers. I think I need to make some leftover things, but that's, that's what I'm gonna, do you know what else I would like to do as well? I was thinking. So this is my little project bag for my socks at the minute. And I've always got these little, notion pouches or scissors so that's in this one. Oh, what have I got in here oh I've got this one that was that was again really kindly gifted um by Zoe of uh Felicity Yarn Studio it came with the the yarn uh, with the fiber anything and these awesome awesome little um they call the wee ones and I've seen this cutest little coffee cup and coffee beans. I don't know if you can see, oh, you won't be able to, but the the little, the white on the coffee cup has kind of turned a little bit blue because I had it on my zwag when I was knitting that and um, it kind of took the colour a little bit. Anyway, how cute are they? They're so cute. I thought also that they'd be really heavy. I don't know, I've never had any like little polymer clay um, stitch markers before and I thought they'd be really heavy and they're not they're so light cute 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 sorry anyway that's not what I was showing you I've got the little notion pouches was what I was getting at I like to have one in each um, bag if I've got a project this one is my favorite because it's not even a pouch it's literally just a scissor case the original scissors have gone because they were naff um, and I replaced them with these cute little pinky ones um, that are from my local um, yarn shop and they're really sharp and I think I've got one in every colour now, one in every bag. And I literally just put um, my sewing in needle and I've got a, what's this, a safety pin with a couple of stitch markers on there. I've got a pencil if I need to do... Um, any marking on patterns or anything, a little crochet project one. Um, yeah, so I think I might have to make a few more of these little cases. This one, I think is a Liberty of London one. It came from um, John Lewis a very long time ago. I think I got it gifted. Um, but yeah, it's like one of the best things. So I think I'm gonna try and replicate it a little bit. Um, maybe with a little pocket or something here, so all this isn't dangling, 
I can just have a little pouch to put a stitch marker in and a needle. That might be a good scrap project. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to have a, have a little turn at making that as well. So lots of plans, lots of things that I've been making. So happy with this. Do you know when you just get a technique that I really enjoyed doing and put in the, that, that zip in? I don't know, it was just satisfying. <laughs> when things turn out well, it's satisfying, I like it. Um, anyway, it's been really nice to catch up with you guys and um, I will see you in a couple of weeks time. If you can, uh, do a thumbs up and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. I think, um, I, you probably know, you've probably heard, YouTube have been changing how they are doing advertisements on videos. Now, I have not got advertisements on I really hope I haven't. But I think they put, they are, they've made it a rule now that they, they're putting it on whether you um, are monetized or not. So I'm really, really hoping that I will be able to get the revenue from any adverts that might be put on my videos in the future. I think I have enough subscribers, but I've not had enough hours watched. So if they're going to be putting the adverts on anyway, I want to be able to choose where they go, how they are they go on with the least amount of inconvenience. We all hate ads. Let's face it, we all hate ads. But if someone's going to be making money out of them, I want it to be me and not them. Okay, <laughs> so if you have made it to the very end, you, we know each other, right? If you could do me a giant favour and just leave me on in the background for a little bit. <laughs> I need to build up the amount of hours people have watched and then I would be able to do that. Does that make sense? Anyway, it'll happen soon. I just want to be able to put the ads where I want them and not where YouTube wants them. And also, if anybody's making any money out of it, I want it to be me. Because I need a new sewing machine. <laughs> I think we should start a new hashtag, like hashtag watch an ad so I can have a sewing machine. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Um, I think the revenue that any, I think if you were to get any revenue from people watching adverts on your YouTube videos, a hundred people have to watch the full advert without skipping. And who doesn't skip adverts? And if you don't, you're really kind. <laughs> Watch the advert at the end of my thing, please. <laughs> okay, guys, I will see you all next time. It's been really nice joining you. See you soon. Bye.